diva so you know it's already Wednesday and it's your girl April and I am back so I know you girls are gonna be like wait a minute hold up yes rocking a short wig okay I freaking fucking love this wig it is by model model or model model whatever you want to call it and this is their clean cap wig okay it is called number eight it's not really like a jazzy name it's just called number eight and it is in a color number two so the actual model picture for this wig is uh, horrendous horrible really freaking ugly like I was contacted by model 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 to do some wig reviews and I chose this wig because it reminded me so much of a wig that I did years ago on a prior channel, on my prior channel called Bishi. And it was Lulu. It was by Bishi and it was called Lulu. And of course, Lulu was groomed and styled on the actual model, just like hideous. However, I styled it a totally different way. Now, the same goes for this unit. She, I've been drinking. Okay, got me some drink. She was styled so hideously but I still said I'm going to try her out because I ain't got to wear her like that I ain't even got to wear her like that if you were to see this wig you girls would have probably went by quickly like went to the next wig super fast like just like that but I said I'm going to give it a chance and I will say this this color number two is so pretty like I love it of course it's synthetic but you cannot even tell it is tapered so lovely and I do have a video that I will be um, posting up really soon so if you girls want to see that within this week's time frame just let me know but I love this wig like oh my god it's so freaking pretty I love it and it's tapered really well but of course I did a little tapering extra which is it's supposed to be a little bit thicker on the sides but I just flipped it behind my ear sprayed it down with some hairspray and yes hunty she is so good to go like super duper good to go so yes this is my short wig and I love it I absolutely love it it's like a boy cut my daughter says it's a pixie cut and when I go short it has to be super duper short I don't really like short like right here um like when it falls like right here I like it to be like so short like really really short like a pixie cut um like a boy cut i really love them when they're like really short like this because it just looks a lot better on me so yes i have been rocking her and i love her but other than that um nothing new uh, i will say this that i am once again single yes it was a breakup um however you know what things happen in life and you gotta move on and I'm the type of person I need my space and uh, certain things just really get to me um, certain things I'm not attracted to um, and I just felt like this was not the right time for a relationship nor was it the right person either and unfortunately it just ended that way but you know what I love being who I am and I love being by myself sometimes and of course we all need Sometimes we don't all need, but sometimes we do need companionship. But like I said before, you got to find yourself. You got to search your soul. You have to find yourself. So even though I have been divorced for a year and um, I have been separated from my ex-husband since 2013, the very beginning of 2013, maybe that wasn't enough time for me. Um, however, it wasn't just me. It was a lot of things to do with him and I'm um, not my ex-husband, but my ex-boyfriend. And... You know, I'm not going to bash him, but I just say this, that you feel like in the beginning that this is the person for you, whether you've known them in the past or what have you, but they come, you come to find out that it's not all bows and whistles. It really, really isn't. And you learn this from just being around the person. And unfortunately, that's how it turned out to be. Um, sometimes you notice a lot of little petty things, and it could be him, it could have been me, but it just, we clashed and unfortunately it ended on a sour note and there were no tears on my end and I'm pretty sure there weren't any on his but I will say this that I'm very happy I've always been happy but now my happiness is up to like 120 max and I really honestly feel like this I think because of all the drama and bullshit that I've been through in my life 
I really just don't want to be in a relationship with anybody. And that's unfortunate. You know, like, I'd rather just be with my kids and take care of my kids and and, and make my money and, 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 and progress in life than to be in a relationship. Sometimes relationships can be so hectic, you know what I'm saying? Like, where you at? when you coming back, when you spending time with me. It just could be just about anything. And me personally, I'm not really ready for none of that. After this, I'm not I'm not game for none of that. Like I just want to be alone. Not alone, but I have my kids. So and I'm happy. Like I'm not one of those women that when they leave a relationship they gotta get into another relationship. I've never been that type. I have been single so many times and for so many years that it's it's like to me it's more or less like a blessing um because i just be myself and i come and go on my own time and i do as i please and i just be april i don't have to please nobody else so with that being said never let anybody just like drag you down and make you feel like you're not appreciated and you're not the person that you want to be. And don't let, like, little petty things irritate you. Like, there are a lot of things that can get under my skin. And it's because of past relationships. And I really, for me, as the type of person I am, I am not about to let any man walk all over me and use me for nothing. You know what I'm saying? So, that may be the reason why I, certain things really irritate me. Because I've already been through that. And I'm not about to let you drag me back into that. So, that's where I stand real strong at. So, I don't think, like, a relationship will ever work out for me. Not right now. I'm about to be 42 years old. And, I, I don't know. I probably won't get into another relationship. Like, a, a relationship until, like, in my late 60s. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because... I just really cannot trust a man in general. Like, there'd be too much bullshit behind it. And I'm just not up for none of that stress and none of that misbehavior. For all of that, just leave me the fuck alone. I'm going to be by my goddamn self. And I'm going to just do me. And I'm going to just take care of my kids. And I'm going to just be April. I don't really give a fuck about the sex. I'm Like I said, I'm 42 years old. I don't care about sex like that anymore. I've already had sex. I have five kids and two grandkids. I really, that's not like a big agenda on my, on my, my part. Like, it's not like no big thing. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes you do feel like you want someone to cuddle with you and be compassionate with you. But then there's a price that you got to pay for all of that. Like, okay, you got to deal with bullshit on their end. Whether they got kids, family members that don't like you, shit like that. And you know what? I've come through too much shit in my life to have to go backwards and for all of that let april just be april meaning let april be the fuck alone okay and so i'm i'm really happy and i'm happy to say that i'm happy and i've been happy but this time around i'm just going to chill and i'm just going to be me and i'm going to just relax and just more or less be free of the drama. So I don't have time for nobody's fucking drama and bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I don't have time for it. So, yes. On that note, if you need a real talk video about yourself or your life or someone you may know, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject word online real talk. And if you want to change the names of anyone in your email, please go ahead and do so and let me know. So that way I am well prepared ahead of time. But today I'm going to try to get to four because I don't want to ramble on too much because you know I can talk. But yeah, um, and other than that, um, life is good. I have been super busy making wigs and videos. I have a new braid video, video wig video that I got to post up. But yeah, if you girls want to see this one, then let me know. So let's get on to the real talk because I got some good ones for you girls. Okay. Okay, so this one is real talk. My best friend thinks I fucked her man. Okay, what? All right. Let me start. Hey, April. 
let me just start off by saying I love all of your videos. You are amazing and always keep it real, which is why I'm coming to you for some advice. I've already changed the names. My name is Kay. I'm 22 and was friends with a girl named Jazzy since I was 7 years old. We used to do everything together, completely inseparable. Anyway, we remained friends until high school and then lost touch. I went off to college in Boston and during my second year, she found me on Facebook. I was so excited to hear from her because I had been trying to get in touch with her for so many years, but her Facebook name wasn't her actual real name. The crazy thing is, the night before she hit me up, I had a dream about her. I was so hyped to rekindle our friendship because although I'm a nice person, I keep my circle small because these bitches are trifling. She had a point. We all, well, we started talking again and agreed to meet up. She tells me she's in a long distance relationship with a guy who she loves. She lives in New York and he lives in Boston. And I told her about my boyfriend who I was still feeling out. But we were both happy for each other. We met up on her boyfriend's birthday and I made a lasagna and brought it over. Instantly, it was like we never were apart. Now here's where shit gets crazy. While we were cleaning the house to get ready for the party, she finds a pair of panties under her boyfriend's bed. She looks at me and she clearly gets upset. I immediately tell her to go off on his ass and she agrees. He gets home and she confronts him and he says he let his friend use his room because he was talking to some girl and she believed him. I don't say much because after all it is her relationship but in my head I'm like what nigga would let his friend fuck some bitch on his bed and what nasty bitch leaves her dirty panties at his house. I left it alone. Months go by and I find myself in the middle of their arguments all the time. And I mean rushing over to his house every other weekend to take her back to my place because he kicked her out. But I mean she always took him back. The only thing I could do was be there for her. One day she was on his iPad and he left his Facebook open. He was talking to a bunch of women online, one being his ex-girlfriend. Well, she calls me crying and tells me she wants to come over. I get off work and she's telling me she's done with him and his shit. I'm finally thinking this is fuck, this fucked up relationship is over. We go get her stuff and can you believe the same night she tells me she's going back to his house? I call my boyfriend and tell him to take her home because now I'm sick of the shit, April. April, April, April. Can you believe this nigga proposes to her three days later? Yes. And with a tacky ass ring at that. So now they want to get married. Oh, did I mention she dropped out of school and quit her job to move to Boston with him? Oh, okay. Fast forward because I know this is getting long. They are engaged and the relationship is rockier than ever. They are both cheating on each other. One day she calls me and asks me if I told him about the guy she was cheating on him with because her boyfriend said that I told him about the new guy, which I did not. So I tell her, no, I don't even like your boyfriend, but my loyalty as a friend is with her, not him. She believed me and he admits, her boyfriend admits that he lied to get her to admit that she was cheating on him. All of a sudden, our communication stops. For six months, I don't hear anything from her. One day, she hits me up out of the blue and apologizes. She said the reason she stopped talking to me is because her fiancé had told her he and I were fucking around. Apparently, they broke up and he had created a text-free account and saved my name under a phony number and was texting himself pretending to be me. Acting as if we were together and fucking and shit. I guess she believed it because on iPhones, you only um, see the person's name and not the number unless it isn't saved. And she's right. She's, she's, she's directly right about that. I, did, I had an iPad. and Well, I have an iPad. And the same thing. I had a text now app. Same thing. I told her that I felt a way that she sh I told her that I felt some type of way that she should have 
um, she would have think I would why would she have think I would do something like that to her and that we needed to see where our friendship stood and that instead of ignoring me for six months she could have just approached me about the situation like we did all of any other situations well she took offense to it deleted me off of Facebook and hasn't spoken to me since it's almost been a year since we've spoken I miss my friend April should I suck should I suck in my pride and hit her up or just keep things the way they are. I need your help. What should I do? Stay beat. K. Okay. Wow. So, as you heard, which really sucks, K has is 22 years old and she's had a friend since she was seven years old. They finally got in touch with each other. Their second year of college, they lost in touch. They lost touch with each other after high school, after graduating. And her best friend, um, Jazzy, was dating a guy that lived in Boston and Jazzy lived in New York. And long distance relationship, Jazzy quit her job, quit school to move to Boston with this dude. And when Kay did finally get to meet up with her, for Jazzy's birthday party, Jazzy finds a pair of girls' panties under her boyfriend's bed. Now, here's the thing. What female... Here is the thing. That is the lamest fucking sorry-ass excuse I've ever heard that you let your friend fuck in your bed because he was with some random bitch. I'm sorry, but... I've heard that so many times, not in any relationship, but I've heard that from people. I've heard that on TV shows. Why do females fall for that shit? So you telling me that you come home or you go to your boyfriend's house and you see some pair of panties that ain't yours, and then he come and tell you, oh, yeah, I let my boy Michael fuck this bitch in my bed. She left her underwear. And you supposed to believe that shit? You supposed to be like, oh, okay. And even if that might have been the case, wouldn't you have still gone off on that nigga? Because, like, why are you letting your friend fuck in the bed with some dirty random bitch? And that's the bed that me and you be fucking in. Like, that shit, even if that was the truth, that still would have got me pissed. Because, like, who does that? But even so, that's the lamest lie I've ever heard. That's like some old school lie. And her friend Jazzy is so fucking stupid to even believe it. Like, for real? And then on top of that, you she's catching him. She's getting thrown out. She's quit her job and her schooling to go move to Boston to live with this dude. She's catching him on Facebook, talking to nigga. I mean, bitches. It's just like a whirlwind. And unfortunately, Kay is trapped up in it. But now the nigga is lying, saying that he's fucking Kay. Using text now apps to pretend like he's talking to her, like, and she's talking to him. And so she's lost contact with a friend. For six months and then when they finally get to speak and her friend apologizes what does Kay do she tells her you could have just came to me basically you could have just came to me and she took offense to that and deleted her from Facebook but Kay misses her friend now you know something I'm gonna I'm be honest and tell you I can tell that this girl is genuine by the feelings about her friend because She's like, I miss my friend. And should she suck up her pride and contact her? Because she hasn't heard from her for almost a year. You know something? When you've had a friendship for so long with somebody, since you were little kids, like wee wee little, and you guys are way older now, and y'all have always been good friends, that's what you call a real friendship. And you should never, ever, ever let any man come in between a friendship with you. And that part is unfortunate because it seems like her best friend's man or ex-man wanted to come in between them two only to kind of like isolate Jazzy, Kay's friend, from her. Because he knew that Kay would have tried to eventually talk some sense into her and have told her to leave him alone. So what better way to do it is to isolate her and go and bash her friends, okay? And that's the unfortunate part, that a lot of females believe their man over their friends. You can find a man, a man comes a dime a dozen, but a real friend, 
is really, really rare. You know what I'm saying? Finding a real friend is so rare, especially with this day and age. People have so many hidden agendas. You don't know why they want to be your friend. It could be because you getting shit or you doing shit and they want to basically eat off of you or they want to gain for their own causes. It's always a hidden agenda when you make a friendship. Not always, but you just basically kind of got to be leery of what type of person you become friends with and what is the real cause but when you have a friendship that you have blossomed since the age of seven and now you're 22 and y'all are still friends that's what you call a real friendship and it's not really k it's not really sucking up your pride to contact her because sometimes a lot of people take for granted their pride and like love what you have for your friend is love. That is more or less like a sister to you. It ain't about pride. You know what I'm saying? And even if it is about pride, sometimes people let their pride get in the way. And they let it control a lot of things. A lot of things that could destine them to better their lives. You know what I'm saying? And could just make them happy. You never know what your destiny may be. But a lot of people hold their pride, hold on to their pride. Because they just don't want to feel ashamed. They don't want to be told no. They don't want to be let down they just don't want any type of the unknown because of their pride and here's the thing you can never say you didn't try unless you try you can never say you could have or would have unless you did you know what i'm saying can't be like should have would have could have unless you did and you honestly kay your friend on the other end jazzy she may feel the same type of way as you are feeling right now meaning Damn, should I suck up my pride and contact her? Because I am the one that deleted her from my Facebook. But, um, that's my pride, girl. I ain't about to go out like that. Psh, whatever. She can contact me. Some bitches be like that. I'll be the first to admit that I can be like that, too, sometimes. Like, you know what I'm saying? I could feel like, you know what? Ugh, that bitch done really scorned me. I ain't fucking with her no more. I ain't got shit to say to her. But... I still feel for her, meaning that's still my, I still, I still love her. You know what I'm saying? You can never hate nobody just like that. Because if you can hate somebody just like that, that means you really didn't give a fuck about them. But if you really that upset with the person and you still hold some feelings inside, then you still generally care about them. But sometimes you got to be a little wishy-washy because that same person that you may want to open up to and say, listen, I, I want to talk to you, they might have some hidden agendas. However, with your friend, I really don't think she has any hidden agendas because you guys have been friends since seven years old. And what fucking seven-year-old you know has some hidden agendas about being your friend? Unless you had a nice big-ass Barbie doll collection and she wanted to get a hold of that shit, okay? Other than that, it ain't about sucking up pride, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta hold back your pride if it is about your pride. And to me, it's not sucking up your pride. It's being a woman. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to be the bigger person at the end. Regardless of how the other person may feel about us, sometimes we got to be the bigger person and put our two feet in first. Jump into the water and be the bigger person. You know what I'm saying? Be the, be the adult in the matter. My suggestion to you, because you guys have been friends for so long and you genuinely miss her, why let yourself suffer? It ain't never too hard to try something. You know what I'm saying? You only got to try one time. And all you need to do is reach out to her. If she decline your reach out, then you leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? You leave it alone. And that's when you realize, okay, maybe she's a little upset still and she hasn't gotten over it or what have you. Or maybe she's just on her own shit right now. Maybe it was bad timing. Just leave it alone. Because... Hopefully, eventually, your friend will come back to you because you've already tried to reach out to her. So, in my opinion, it ain't about sucking up pride. It's about being a woman and being a bigger person. And if that's your friend and you really love her as a friend and more or less like a sister, don't let her go because... Friends, real friends, are very rare. And we all make mistakes sometimes in a friendship. No friendship is going to be golden. A real friendship 
like a real true friendship, bestie relationship, you will argue and bicker with each other, but you will always come back to one another at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh girl, you know what? I'm sorry. I love you. You know what I'm saying? That's what you call a real friendship because you argue. That's just like with me and my daughter. We're mother and daughter, but she's still like my best friend. We don't argue, but we have our disagreements. And I apologize to her. She apologized to me. And at the end of the day, we are still loving each other. We are still the best of friends. We are still mother and daughter. And it goes the same. Some people are just more stubborn than others. And maybe that's the case with your friend. But you don't have to be like that. You can be the bigger person and show her, you know what? I'm going to call her up. I'm going to try to contact her. Hey, Jazzy, I know things have been rough over the past year between you and I. And unfortunately, this has happened. However, I won't ever let any male, I will not let any man come in between our friendship. I consider you to be a sister more than a friend. And I would love for us to contact each other again so that we can talk. Because this has been weighing heavy on me. Sometimes words like that can reach a person right here. Sometimes people that are so stubborn can't write shit like that because they pride. But you know what? A real person, a real grown-up, a real woman, a real man will say exactly how they feel and base their whole communication off of their feelings and truth. You know what I'm saying? So, my opinion to you, Kay, is to reach out to your friend and talk to her and try to get her to come around because she may be feeling bad because she blocked you and she may not know how to come at you because she may feel like you are feeling some type of way and you don't want no dealings with her and in reality you miss her so it could be both on both ends you never know unless you try and that's just my opinion and this is how I feel about it you know what I'm saying I have had many friends, not many friends, but I have had enough friends that I have had to let go. And there have been um, some that I loved so much and unfortunately I had to let go. And honestly, I miss the hell out of them. But stubborn as I am sometimes, I just leave it the fuck alone. And maybe eventually one day, myself, I will come around and be like, you know what? Hey, we need to have a talk. Because this has been weighing heavy on me. And as mad and upset as you have got me because of that bullshit, I still love you as a friend and as a person. And that's that. So let Kay know what you girls would do in a situation. You know, everybody has their own feelings towards friendship. But that's just my take on it. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Hey, April, I love your videos, and I appreciate you taking the time to read this. Changed names already. You can call me Michelle. I'm 24 years old, recent college graduate, still staying with my parents. I'm working and doing pretty well for myself. My boyfriend, Boo, and I have been together on and off for about two and a half years. I love him, and he says he loves me as well. Things were really good in the beginning, however, lately it just seems as if we're going downhill. I don't think he respects me enough. I want to be clear, he never put his hands on me or calls me out of my name. However, he's not considerate of my feelings and our relationship, of my, of my feelings and of our relationship anymore. Sometimes I feel like I'm in this by myself and it's really frustrating. He works for a good company and is in, in school, so I understand the stress he endures. However, I just feel like he doesn't respect or appreciate me. Most of the time when I want to hang out or spend time, he says he's too tired from work or school, which I try to understand because I know his schedule and his work is pretty hectic. However, in spite of how tired he always claimed to be, I recently found out that he had been cheating on me. Yes, girl, I found condom wrappers behind the pillow, shaking my head. I forgave him, and he was all sweet and considerate again. That lasted for about two weeks. Here we are, a month or so later, and I still feel like I'm not getting what I need from him. 
he can be moody and inconsiderate and I just don't know what to do. I guess what I'm asking is how can I get the respect and attention that I need from him? I don't really want to leave him because on paper he has all the qualities of a good man. However, I need to be firm and demand the respect that I deserve. Do I act like a bitch? Should I give him an ultimatum? Please help. Thank you and sorry it's so lengthy. First of all, Michelle, it ain't even hardly lengthy. This was it. But Michelle is 24 years old. Her boyfriend works for a good company and goes to school. He's always claiming he's tired, don't want to hang out, don't want to spend time with her ex, all moody, inconsiderate. She feels like she's in a relationship by herself. However, she found out also that he's been cheating on her. Found the condom wrappers behind the pillow, and he apologized and was sweet for two weeks, and then went back to being moody and inconsiderate. And she feels like this. <coughs> Mm, excuse me. <coughs> mm, I gotta take a... She feels like this. That he has all the good qualities of a man on paper because he's got a good job and he goes to school. However, she wants the respect that he is... that she deserves. Should she be a bitch or give him an ultimatum? An ultimatum. Okay, first of all, sweetheart, Michelle, what the fuck make you think that he got all the good qualities of being a good man on paper because he got a good job? I'm sorry, but um, did he cheat on you and you found the condom wrappers? Because what good qualities of a man is that? Yeah, everybody probably do cheat. Everybody might do cheat, but not everybody do fucking cheat. Okay, let's get this straight. He might have a good fucking job and he might have a good education. But that don't make him no good fucking man. Just because he got a good job and a good education don't mean shit. He can have all of that and be a real straight up jack the fuck ass. Yes, a straight up jackass, okay? I don't really see any good qualities in a man if he's inconsiderate, moody, don't want to hang out with you, and been cheating on you and found the proof, okay? Um, where the fuck is that good qualities? Let me tell you something, sweetheart. If you cannot get the respect from him, what the fuck makes you think that being a bitch is going to give you the respect. And giving him an ultimatum is going to give you respect. That nigga could be like, ultimatum, my ass, bitch, I already got pussy on the side anyway, so why the fuck I need you? Bitch, bye. Now, what if he said, bye, Felicia, bye, okay? There go your ultimatum. You ain't got to give nobody no fucking ultimatum. This is the thing. I hate when people be like, well, I'm going to give you an ultimatum. You either going to act right or I'm going to leave. Nigga, bye, okay? I'm not about to give you no fucking ultimatum. You ain't got choices and options in this shit. You either gonna be a man and be true to the game or fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? Fuck out of here. Ain't no options. Ain't no ultimatums in this shit. You know what I'm saying? We're not dealing with little kids where we give them ultimatums like, Look, Jen, you can either have peanut butter and jelly or ham and cheese. Okay? Which one are you gonna have? Because I'm not gonna stand here for two hours debating with you. This is not a kid that we're giving ultimatums to. One of your kids. This is a grown ass fucking man. He got a good job and he got an education. But there are thousands of other men out there that got a good job and a good education and don't fuck around. Okay? So, and being a bitch, you think that because you being a bitch that that's going to make a motherfucker give you respect? No, bitch. That's going to make the motherfucker hate you and also fucking turn to the next bitch that he been fucking on the side with the condoms underneath the bed, okay? Niggas don't like you being a bitch neither. I don't understand what makes you feel like because you a bitch that that nigga's going to feel like, oh, I'm going to give you respect because she's a bitch, all right? Maybe that work with some motherfuckers, but that shit don't work with every fucking body. Okay, here's my thing. I'm not about to fucking make anybody respect me. If you can't fucking respect me as the person I am, then bye, motherfucking bye, motherfucker bye. Okay, on some real shit, I'm not going to fucking keep sitting around demanding respect from somebody because if I have to keep demanding respect from you that means you've been disrespecting me all this time and who the fuck really wants to put up with disrespect I'm sorry but my patience is real thin when it comes to motherfuckers that disrespect me male or female I really don't have time for it so if you gonna constantly keep res disrespecting me then that means I'm going to have to constantly keep going upside your head. And I don't really have time to be constantly going upside your head. So the best thing for you and the best thing for me, definitely the best thing for me, is to leave your ass the fuck alone. Okay? Seriously. The nigga already cheated on you. 
and um you already found the condom wrappers that is a big huge sign of disrespect of course he's gonna be nice for the first couple of weeks why wouldn't he be because i'd be damned if you caught me cheating and then i was just a real fucking moody disrespectful nigga after i cheated on you i mean why the fuck would i be like that of course i'm gonna brown nose of course i'm gonna kiss your ass and get into your good graces again and eventually i'm gonna go back to being my motherfucking self moody impatient incorrect in fucking considerate asshole that the fuck i am that's what the fuck i'm gonna be y'all bitches need to realize okay these non-purpose ass men Meaning, they are non-purpose. If you find a motherfucker cheating on you, what makes you think because he apologizes that he's not going to cheat on you again? Okay? You might be one of the lucky motherfuckers that don't get cheated on or don't get cheated on again. But here is my thing. If I find a motherfucker talking shit about me to anybody and we in a relationship... That means you grind me and I just can't trust you. Because if you talking shit about me, then I'm not fucking with you. If you cheated on me, I'm not fucking with you no more. Bottom line, okay? That right there, all my respect and love goes out the window. The door, the fucking shed, wherever the fuck it goes, is gone. Okay? Because you cannot be trusted. And then I lose all respect for you. All right? Oh, you apologize. Big motherfucking deal. I apologize for fucking that bitch in the bed and having condoms. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Really, though? I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you cheat on a motherfucker like me I'm not wasting no time I don't give a fuck about your apologies I don't give a fuck about how you feel that's your motherfucking feelings nigga you ain't that motherfucking sorry because you was fucking the bitch that's where the number one disrespect came from um Michelle why don't you demand some respect from yourself and get it the fuck together because if he ain't fucking respecting you and he ain't considerate to your feelings then what the fuck make you think that being a bitch or demanding him to be is going to work no this is what you do you leave him the fuck alone I don't give a fuck if he was a fucking mayor or the president of the United States and had a good job like as a president and a good education a dog is a motherfucking dog, okay? Just because he got a good job and an education, don't make him better than no motherfucking body else, okay? And don't make him a better man. Because you can have the best bombers job in the motherfucking world and be a fucking genius. But once you slip your dick into somebody else's pussy, okay, you done totally disrespected me. And there's no way that I can trust you again. And on top of that, I ain't trying to fuck with you no more. Okay? So, Michelle, your boyfriend ain't all that on paper because he got a good job. He's a fucking dog, and he done cheated on you, and he treats you like shit, meaning he's inconsiderate. So if you think that it's going to get any better, which it hasn't, then dream on, sweetheart, and keep on fucking dreaming, because you are just lost in your own world, all right? So that is my advice to you, to get it together, because he's not a good man on paper. He's got a good paying job, and he's got an education. whoop the fucking do all right? whoop do. There are a lot of those assholes out there that got those two qualifications. And they are the most dumb, not dumbest, but they are the most assholes, okay? Meaning because they feel like they got it all together that that's how they can treat a person. A woman, a man, whatever the fuck, female, male, this is how they feel. So he's not a good man on paper. He doesn't have the man qualities because he's got a job. Money don't make a person, all right? It may make the world go round, and it may make you survive because you got a good-ass job. But just because he has a good-ass job and he has money does not make him a better person. Sometimes that can make him more of an asshole than somebody that's working minimum wage, okay, who's more humble. You know what I'm saying? 
So get it together and think about what the fuck I just said. Because what the fuck? I ain't about to sit here and demand no respect from nobody. If you can't give me that shit willingly, then you ghost. Goodbye, Felicia. Bye, fucking Felicia. Hmm. So let uh, Michelle know what your feelings are on this one. It like kind of really pissed me off because what makes you feel like he's a good man because he got a good job on paper? Like, so fucking what? Like, big deal. Get out of here. I'd rather have a man that could respect me totally 100%, don't cheat, respect me, and work a regular job. Like, for real, like. Bitches get it twisted sometimes, and they look and they see other things because they 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 looking from here, you know what I'm saying, and not from here sometimes. Like fucking common sense, goddamn, it's common fucking sense. Anyway, next. <clears throat> Hi April, I stumbled on your page looking for hair reviews, but I stayed and got hooked to the Real Talk Wednesday videos for the videos. So glad I found you. Anyway, to my dilemma, my name is Kiki. I have been friends with Trevor for the past 10 years. When we met, he became, when we met, he came up from Jamaica on summer vacation and stayed with my cousin. We were both 19 at the time and, well, we had sex one time. I was going away to college in upstate New York that fall and I said, what the hell? Anyway, we have been friends ever since. We both have been each other's rock over the years with relationships and life, etc. We had never ever done it again. We have never had sex ever again. But over the years, it has come in conversation, mainly him, that we should do it again. So basically, he's saying that we should have sex again. And I humbly say no, because it would ruin our great friendship. That was until a month ago. We had a tradition, a tradition that if we weren't in a relationship, we would alternate cooking at each other's house on Sundays and just hang out. No big deal. Well, I don't know what happened, but girl, we had sex again. It was amazing. Soon after I found myself getting jealous and upset about the simplest things, Who's he talking to on the phone? And yes, even his older female roommate. I don't know why. This is what I was scared of. Me getting obsessive over little petty things. Please, I need your advice. I haven't told any of my other friends what happened. But I don't know but I don't want to throw a great friendship away. How should I control my anger and should I and should not sleep with him again? Thanks. Smooches sincerely, Kiki. So Kiki been friends with this dude since they've been 19 years old for the past 10 years. And of course they had sex when they was like 19, went away to college, blah, 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 kept in touch. And they've been just like the best of friends, really good friendship. And they ended up having sex again with each other. So now Kiki is basically getting kind of obsessed and jealous about just the littlest things. Um, let's see, Kiki, that's because you caught some feelings for the dude. You caught some feelings for Trevor, okay? I don't know, but it seems like Trevor got some feelings for you, but he ain't just saying that shit. That's what I'm starting to feel because he's suggesting that y'all have sex with each other again. Y'all hanging out with each other. What dude, what man really do, um, does that if he doesn't have some type of feeling for the girl? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the best friends, male and female, can make the best relationship you know what I'm saying they can make the best husband and wife they can make the best boyfriend and girlfriend because they've been friends for so long the best of friends that they know what each other's bad points are they know each other really really well and sometimes a lot of the time those type of friendships male and female friendships that have been best friends they have been best friends and they just make like a really good relationship and it, it has a lot to do with because they've been friends. You know what I'm saying? They've been friends for so long. They know each other. And they've been, they've been so overprotective of each other. And that's just where it just begins. So you have, have become obsessed and jealous because you got some feelings for this dude. And apparently he has some feelings for you because why would he suggest that he wants to have sex with you? Some dudes do it because they just don't give a fuck. However, you guys are kind of clingy to one another. And you guys 
are feeling each other. He wants to have y'all are alternating Sunday cook days coming to each other's house. I'm sorry, but if he really wasn't into you like that, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't be coming to your house on no motherfucking Sunday wanting to share and swap recipes with you. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, he's feeling some type of way about you, and he don't really know how to say it, so I guess he feels like this is the way to go about it, by sexually um, being active with you. And that's unfortunate. Maybe he wants you to make the first move, but so what? You haven't told your friends about it. And now you don't want to have sex with him anymore because you don't want to be obsessed. How about this? You ever thought about just telling him how you feel? Because obviously you have some type of feelings for him. If you're becoming jealous. You, you are feeling him. And you feel like you're going to ruin a great friendship. You might ruin a great friendship if you don't say anything at all. Okay? And you may find yourself trying to avoid him because you don't want to ruin a good friendship by saying anything. And sometimes that's not the best thing to do. Now, in my opinion, I would say something to him. I would let him know, listen, Trevor. Um, we've been friends for so long. And I really don't know how to tell you to say it to him. Because it's basically going to come from your heart. But in my opinion, I really feel like you need to let him know how you feel. You don't have to say, oh, I'm obsessed with you. Because then he might think you're a little cuckoo. But, and you don't have to say, I'm jealous. But you can basically tell him that you've had um, feelings for him for quite some time. And I'm not really sure how you feel about me. But I just needed to get this off of my chest. I don't want to ruin our friendship. But I really felt like I needed to say this to you. Now, he either may lean in and kiss your ass. Or he may lean out and be like, what? And be like, I felt the same way. But I didn't know how to say anything. You ain't never going to know unless you try and find the fuck out. And don't think that because you telling him it's going to ruin a friendship. It may make your friendship a lot stronger. Even if he doesn't have these feelings about you. Because that way, if that's the case, then you know don't open up the legs and give him the goodies no more. Because he's a, he's a horny young boy. Or... He may feel like, yo, I really care for you and I want to be with you. Then what? You got a relationship that has been a friendship for so long. And like I said, friendships and best friendships that, that blossom sometimes be the best relationships. Like, they end up being the best relationships. And a lot of those people that have been friends for so long, oh my God, they be like married forever, okay? I, you know what? I wish that I would have had a guy best friend and, and shit because I bet you I would have been like the happiest person because it seems like when you are best friends with a guy sometimes they kind of like y'all mold into each other and y'all like the same thing and y'all dislike the same thing which is good you know what I'm saying and you just have like this great chemistry together and it just blossoms into like the best relationship when you're in a relationship with somebody like a, a random person you get to know them but you really don't get to fucking know them you know what i'm saying it'd be like their representative you don't really know what that motherfucker's about regardless if you had kids with them and you you see them years later on in life you still don't really know what that motherfucker's about because you just be putting on a front for me but with a best friend relationship male and female you know what that motherfucker is about. You've seen him with other bitches. You know what type of dude he is. So you get the feel for him. And you know what to expect. And with you, they're not that way. Because they have like total, total respect for you. Because you have been their best friend for so long. And I really think like those relationships are sometimes the best. Because they, you know that person. Like genuinely know that person. So, in my eyes, I don't find, like, it's any harm to say something to him. But if you don't say something to him, that means that your friendship may be a little bit altered. And you may kind of, like, ruin the friendship like that. Because you may try to start avoiding him. So, me, personally, I would definitely say something to him. You don't have to come on too strong. And don't feel like, because what you say to him, he's got to say it back to you. So, you know what I'm saying? Just, just be prepared. But I would, de I, me personally, I would definitely let him know how I feel. Because if you're getting jealous over shit, that's because you got feelings for him. Duh. Okay? And like you said, the sex was amazing. Who don't like to have amazing sex? I'm, I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? 
So anyway, let her know what you think about that. Now, so on to the next, the last. This is the last. My name is Chanel, by the way, by, and I changed my name for you, April. I've been watching your videos since your first YouTube channel. I love all the advice that you have given, and some of them have helped me in my past relationships. I've known my boyfriend for about a year. We took a six-month break because of his jealous and insecurities. Shortly after, we got back together. We met at a bar and talked and caught up on what we did over the summer. Even though I wasn't dating anyone serious, but I still was going out on dates. He told me the same and we decided to give it another try. Weeks into the relationship, he told me he was dating a girl for five months. And it ended badly, but he still had feelings for her. But he didn't tell me he broke up with her until a month after we started dating. I was crushed, and I felt like I was the rebound chick. Also, there was more. While we were dating, I didn't know his ex put a restraining order against him and domestic violence suit against him. I was angry he would keep that a secret from me. Shortly after, his parents kicked him out, and he started staying with me and my sister. Things got bad. We were arguing all the time. Also, one night while we were sleeping, I went through his phone and saw that he was talking to other females. I started packing up his stuff and told him to leave. It got bad, and we both fought each other, and my sister ended up calling the cops. Weeks after I decided I didn't want, weeks later, I decided I didn't want to press any charges against him because I didn't want to go to court, but emotionally, I was down. My sister was very upset, but it was my decision. After I found out he was staying with his brother, that didn't work out. He is homeless, and he has been living in my car. Through the winter times, because he is not allowed to be in the house, he's been trying to get back on his feet and started working again because of his record. It is hard for him to get a job, but I'm getting tired of it all, and I want to move on. A part of me wants to stay. I'm confused, and I don't know what to do. I've tried leaving him. Also, I feel sorry for him. He says things are going to get better, and I can learn to love him again. A lot of things happen within a few months of us being together, and I'm still emotionally down. I don't know how to feel anymore. There is no intimacy and no romance. Every little thing he does gets on my nerves, and under my skin. He is leaving this summer for work and won't be back until October. While we are, were apart, I broke up with him. He was very upset and called me every name in the book. It's upsetting to me because I've always been supportive. What can I why what I don't get is why he would be disrespect why he would disrespect me like that. I feel hurt and upset. I'm trying to move on and start dating again. Help me. I could use your advice on how to move on. Mm. Chanel, bitch, how to move on and say bye, nigga, bye, okay? Let me tell you something. First of all, domestic violence is no bullshit, all right? I have already been there with that same bullshit. And I'm going to tell you what. The next time a motherfucker put their hands on me, your bitch ass is going to fucking jail. I have no problem calling the cops on somebody and putting them in jail, especially if you are a cowardly ass man who likes to hit on women. What motherfucker you know like to beat on women like on some real shit that's like some real coward move that's like me april at 42 years old going outside and fighting some eight or nine year old because they said some shit to my daughter that's that's like the same fucking thing you know what i'm saying so you got a grown-ass man wanting to fight a woman like wow a dude if you can't get your grips and your emotions and your feelings together, then you need to go fucking jump off the fucking roof on some real shit. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Chanel. Don't feel sorry for his ass because I don't think he felt sorry for you when he was putting your, his motherfucking hands on you. Sometimes people got to go through hardship in life to be more responsible and to be a better person in life. And so fucking what he's been sleeping in your car. I tell you what, that motherfucker wouldn't have been sleeping in my goddamn car. There are a whole lot of shelters in every fucking state. That motherfucker would have been in a shelter. You're not about to sleep in my car and inconvenience me. I'm not about to let any motherfucking man inconvenience me in anything that I fucking do. 
point blank period okay that is just the bottom line it's unfortunate that people are homeless however you have to think rationally did you put yourself in that predicament to be homeless why did his parents kick him the fuck out why don't him and his brother work out when he was living with him obviously there's a problem there and then you didn't work out with you living with you so there are three people that he didn't work out with living with unfortunately there's a fucking issue and it's not with you people it is with him you know what I'm saying if your own parents put you out there is a lack of respect if your brother and you are not working out and living with him there is a lack of respect and if you and your sister put his ass out then there is a lack of respect however if you don't want to press charges on a nigga okay fine whatever but don't feel sorry for his ass move the fuck on because as long as you let him allow you to feel sorry for him that is all you're going to do is feel sorry for him and your fucking self if you are tired and there's no intimacy and there's no romance that means that you are tired and he is a loser and you are dis um disgusted with him there's no reason to hang around let his ass go get a job and go somewhere and be the fuck gone let him be somebody else's problem i'd be damned if i'm gonna let a motherfucker put his hands on me but if you do motherfucker Here's what's going to happen. Your ass will go to jail and you better hope that my motherfucking kids don't come after you and fuck your ass the fuck up on some real shit. So once they are domestically violent, then they're domestically violent. There's a reason why his ex-girlfriend put a restrainer on him after five months of the relationship. Wow, what type of dude really goes around beating on women? Like, for real, that is, like, the biggest coward move there is. I have already had to fight in several relationships, and I'm not about to do it anymore. That's the reason why I say I want to be alone, because I don't have time for bullshit, I don't have time for stress, and I'm not about to let no motherfucker drag me down. If you want to put hands on somebody, then go ahead, but don't try me, okay? Because you'll find yourself somewhere that you really don't want to fucking be, okay? On some real shit. How do you move on? By cutting all ties with him. Letting him not sleep in your motherfucking car. And letting him be on with his life. Stop feeling sorry for the nigga. He's, you are his crutch. On some real shit? I'm sorry, but me personally, I don't never feel sorry for no motherfucker. Especially a grown ass man that can handle their own. If you put yourself in a predicament, I'm not going to feel sorry for you. There's the reasons why he don't get along and he ain't living with three different people. There's a reason. There are three reasons why, okay? With his parents, with you, and his own brother. There is reasons why, okay? And he's just not telling them to you. Just like he didn't tell you directly, automatically, right away, about the bitch that he was fucking with for five months. There's reasons why. Stop feeling sorry for these niggas. This is the problem. Y'all bitches be like, oh, I feel sorry for him. You really think they give a fuck about you and feel sorry for your dumb asses? Like on some real shit? Do you really feel like that? Um... A nigga will use you as long as you allow them. A bitch will use you as long as you allow them to. Motherfucker, if you allow me to use you, I'm going to use you as long as you allow me to. That's just common sense in every motherfucking given life story. You don't fucking feel sorry for people because that person you feel sorry for, do you really think that nigga feels sorry for you? Do you really think he felt sorry for you when he was fighting you in your own house? Really, who the fuck comes to somebody else's shit and want to fight them? I'm just saying. Stop feeling sorry for motherfuckers. And that's just that. So on that note, ladies, let all these ladies know how you feel and how you would handle the situation. Me personally, I'm not feeling sorry for niggas no more. I've been not feeling sorry for them a long time ago. That's why my ass got divorced. Because I've been stopped feeling sorry for motherfucking men, okay? If you can't come correct, you ain't got to come with a whole bunch of shit. But, nigga, you got to come correct. And if you can't come with that shit, if you want to be a liar, a cheater, a swindler, a user, a fucking non-motivated, non-purpose ass nigga, then don't come around me at all on some real shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not hard up for a relationship. I don't need it. I'm best by myself. And that's that. So, on the next note, I'll see you ladies on the next video. Stay diva and diva-licious. Diva and diva-licious. And leave your comments below.